Superheroes who can't die? Well, I mean, if you've watched the first two parts of this list, or like, you know, read comics ever, you'll know that death is kind of inconsequential in comics these days. So of course we're back at it with another superheroes who can't die list. When while that whole everybody dies and comes back thing is still on the back burner here, we've tried to focus on heroes who are more so immortal this time around. So let's jump right in. And at number 10 is Franklin Richards. Starting this list off is the child of Reed Richards and Sue Storm. This kid is a mutant beyond Omega level with a vast reality manipulating and psionic powers, to the point where other cosmic entities, including Galactus, are impressed with his abilities, feeling he's, and I quote, on par with them. And while it hasn't been officially stated, it has been greatly implied after his defeat of two celestials from Earth 4280 that he's immortal. Pretty impressive for a kid. And at number 9 is Dr. Fate. Kent Nelson is the first Dr. Fate, a powerful sorcerer and agent of the Lords of Order. But Kent's immortality is conditional on his magic. He and his wife Einza end up passing away once their magic fails them, but the two end up coming back. Their souls have been floating around in a fantasy world inside of an amulet, and they're resurrected into younger bodies, and Einza takes over the Dr. Fate mantle. And at number 8 is Nabu. Speaking of Dr. Fate, let's talk about the god who gave him his powers, Nabu. Nabu is a member of the Lords of Order, and descended to Earth to become Nabu the Wise, an advisor to the pharaohs of Ancient Egypt. During his time on Earth, he's tried to overthrow Vandal Savage, who at that time was a pharaoh. That's pretty fair. You definitely want to overthrow him, I can see why. So clearly, Nabu has been around for a long, long time. His soul resides in Dr. Fate's helm and is generally unsympathetic towards the humans who wear the helm. Number seven is Talia al Ghul. Typically an anti hero, Talia is the daughter of Ra's al Ghul. Similar to her father, she has access to the Lazarus Pits, therefore is immortal. And it's easy to see why Bruce Wayne finds himself so attracted to her. She's pretty awesome, being at peak physical condition, has MBA degrees in biology, engineering, and business, and she's incredibly talented with most hand weapons and hand to hand combat. And at number six is Spike. From Buffy the Vampire, Vampire Slayer, Spike is a vampire who has a complex story arc over the course of the six seasons he appears in, where he turns from Big Bad to one of the Scoobies. Spoilers if you haven't seen the show yet, which I mean, you really should, you should like, go watch it. Now. Or right after this video, of course. Spike dies at the end of the series, but then comes back in season 5 of Angel's spin off series, aptly named Angel. While this has to do with a certain magical object he dons in the last episode of Buffy, aside from that, dude is otherwise immortal and has been a vamp since 1880, earning himself the name William the Bloody for his years of ruthless killing and his track record for killing two slayers, which is pretty damn impressive. So much impressiveness on this list. In at number 5 is Ghost Rider. Johnny Blaze sold his soul to Mephisto, who he actually thought was Satan, to save the life of his father, or I guess stepfather. In return, at night or whenever evil is around, his flesh is consumed by hellfire and his head becomes a flaming skull. He's bonded with the demon Zarathos, who Mephisto does not like. His father died nearly almost immediately after, unfortunately, but Johnny was still possessed by Zarathos and under Mephisto's power. Nothing like bonding with the demon to fast track get an eternal life. In at number 4, Solar, Man of the Atom. Solar first appeared in Dr. Solar, Man of the Atom number 1 in 1962, published by Gold Key Comics. The hero would later move to Dark Horse in the 2000s and then on to Dynamite Entertainment, with the premise changing as he changed publishers, but still keeping the gist of it. Regardless, the character initially started out as a physicist named Dr. Philip Solar, who was assisting and averting a nuclear meltdown that had been caused by a sabotage ploy by an evil mastermind named Neuro. Solar absorbed a ton of radiation in the process and was capable of converting his body into any kind of nuclear energy. His second reincarnation experienced a similar nuclear accident, except gave him the ability to manipulate all forms of matter and energy. As long as he's got that energy, he's gonna keep on ticking, which is the trick to his immortality. He's like a super battery. Take that, Energizer Bunny. Number three is Etrigan, the Demon Prince of Hell. Created by Jack Kirby, Etrigan is an immortal demon who also has regenerative healing abilities, precognition, and telepathy, and the usual superhuman physical abilities. Oh, and he can project Hellfire, which is like really cool. Anyway, he's the son of a demon and was summoned by his half brother Merlin, yep, the wizard, who wants to know all of his secrets. When Etrigan doesn't give in, Merlin bonds him with Jason Blood, a knight in Arthur's Camelot, which makes Jason immortal, and the hero who eventually resurfaces as a demonologist in Gotham centuries later. Our number two spot spot is The Spectre. The Spectre first appeared in Morphon Comics 52 in 1940, where he appeared on the cover like this. Feels a little bit more revealing when he's got flesh tones instead of his usual silver body. Anyway, the Spectre is immortal and is capable of reality warping and has knowledge of events before the crisis on infinite earths. He was originally a cop named Jim Corrigan, was murdered by crooks, and his body was thrown into cement and dumped into the water. His soul wasn't ready to leave earth though, and Archangel Michael was like, yo, I'm gonna bond you with the spirit of God's vengeance and then you can roam earth for the next 60 years punishing wrongdoers. Oh, 
eternal life. And finally, in at number one, Molecule Man. Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, first appearing in Fantastic Four Volume 1, number 20 in 1963. Owen Reese was a sulky, weak willed man who worked at a nuclear power plant, where he accidentally activated an experimental particle generator and entered the radiation. This gave him the ability to control all matter, down to the molecular level and all energy. He's essentially a multiversal composite entity. He's a single creature that manifests fractions of its entire being in each universe, or at least according to Dr. Damon Reed Richards. Scary shit. There we have it, friends. Any heroes you know of that we should have included on this list? Give us a shout below in those comments below, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons while you're at it. For now, I'm Kelly Pally for Top 10 Nerd, and I'll catch you all in the next one.